With a family legacy to theatre fame and Hollywood, the youngest Otto may prove to be the brightest star so far. She's a writer, director, producer, actor and model, and not to mention sports star and Sydney socialite. Today we're here with Gracie Otto, the girl who isn't defined by her father's talent, her sister's accomplishments or her ex-boyfriend's fame, but rather the girl who's making her own mark on the map in a very big way, with all stops leading towards the City of Angels. Good afternoon, Gracie. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Gracie, you've had an amazing year so far. You've done everything from directing short films to starring in a celebrity soccer match with Anthony LaPaglia. What haven't you done so far? Um, I, yeah, I've had a busy year. I guess I always do things that are like, I do lots of different things. So I started at film school by doing, directing and writing short films. And then I acted in a feature film that I edited. And then, yeah, I was over in LA and, um, yeah, I played in this celebrity soccer game. And that was really fun, actually, um, because I was the only girl and I, I thrive on that. And I scored, like, four goals. And I played against, like, the ex, like, national, like, French chap like captain and guy from Chelsea and and did you win yeah we did well actually Anthony I was on Anthony's team so he was goalkeeper and then I had this guy Frank LaBeouf who played for he won the French World Cup and then but Vinnie Jones who was like a really famous player he was playing against us and he was like famous always getting like sent off with red cards and he was like mark the girl like they're getting all like because I didn't think I'd be very good and I scored goals so and I guess not many people are aware that you actually used to play soccer for Australia yeah I know it's been a while now since I played but yeah I, you know I in actually in the film three blood Mars I was in recently I got to juggle a soccer ball so people are always like how did you learn how to do that and I was like oh I used to play soccer so three blind mice was your debut into acting is that correct? yeah well, I did drama at um, school, but then I, had, I went to film school and I didn't want to do acting because everyone in the family did acting. And then I was going out with Matt at the time and, you know, he really wanted me to be in the film and I wasn't really sure because I just got back from Paris and I was like, oh, acting. I was like, I don't know about that. Can I be behind the scenes? And then I really enjoyed it, doing it. Which side of the camera do you prefer to be on? I don't know. I prefer, I mean, I really do like writing and directing because you're always, like, creating something. And then I find now that I've kind of started acting, like, I'll go for auditions and you have to... You know, you feel like it's like an exam, like you do all this work on it and then there's no result after unless you like get the part. So you kind of feel like you do all this work, whereas if you're you know, writing and directing, you're still at least doing something. So I guess it's safe to say that you like to see the finished product then? Yeah, and I think also with like, because at the moment I've got a feature film in development that I've written, but it's really hard to kind of get the money when you're really young. And not that it's easier to do acting when you're younger, but you know, there's, I just want to work in the industry. So whether it's whatever it is at the moment, I'm happy to do. Basically, you're happy to just do whatever, be whatever. Yeah. So whatever keeps you happy. Yeah, whatever like I can kind of whatever work I can get, you know. I just like being. I think that's I've worked out. That's what I want to do is be around films and you know, things like that. Whether it is in front or behind the camera. Yeah. So I guess it's safe to say that French culture has influenced you quite dramatically. Then after your trip um, in 2007 with your best friend. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. Nearly eight months I lived over there with um, my best friend, and it was just after I went to film school, and we kind of you know. That's what my feature film's kind of based on, is, you know, two girls that go to Paris and everything that goes wrong, so... That's uh, La Meme Nuit, is that correct? No, no, this is the uh, Rue de Turn On. La Meme Nuit is the, uh, short, the short I made that's in the hotels. And what do the titles actually mean for our viewers out there? La Meme Nuit means the same night, and so that's a short film about three couples who are having affairs. So my dad plays the concierge, and he's the only one who knows about the affairs. Excuse me, uh, what was it I had to tell you again? So, how have you been? Yeah, um, great. Uh... Funny how you never seen anyone here. Hmm. And then um, my feature film, which I'm making next year, is called Rude to Turn On, which is the name of the street I lived in. And we just thought it was funny because it was like Turn On Street, and we're like, oh, that's kind of funny. And can you tell us what the synopsis is for your upcoming feature, Rude to Turn On? Um, well, it's, it's like, I mean, there's seven kind of stories that happen all over the world, and they all end up in the same apartment building. And, but essentially it's like two girls that go to Paris and it's not, I wouldn't call it a coming of age story, it's more like a coming of age story for all ages because there's older people in it and French people in different cultures and they all, you know, end up in the same apartment building. Yeah. Okay, and so back to uh, La Meme Nui, which starred both your father and your ex-boyfriend Matthew Newton, how was it working with the two of them? Well, at the time, Matt and I weren't going out, so, I mean, it was just like working with anyone else. And, um, yeah, Dad was really good because he, we were doing all these scenes in the hotel and the hotel got angry at us because we were you know a student film or whatever and so I had to do all his scenes in like one go and he was really professional so there's a couple of times he was a bit annoying like he'd you know be standing around and, like in shot and I'd be like dad you're not in this scene like you know because he was wearing like a 1950s concierge outfit all the people in the hotel thought he worked there and they'd be like oh where's the guest room and he'd just be joking around and I was like dad we're gonna get kicked out like you gotta gotta focus like go and sit down and, and will we be seeing Matt and Barry teaming up in any of your future films? Well, yeah, I mean, the feature that I've got at the moment, like, I mean, it depends on, you know, what money we get and how it's, like, raised and where it's made and everything. But also, Dad was in Three Blind Mice, which is the feature film that I was in that Matt made. 
So that, yeah, and they did a play together. So you know, they're still good friends. So you've been fortunate enough to travel all around the world for your work, um, being invited as a guest of honour at the Japan Film Festival and also the Thessaloniki Film Festival in Greece. Um, how did that feel? I guess yeah, being the guest of honour, going to those events. Yeah, it was great. I, I mean, I loved the one in Japan because. I got to go to Tokyo for a week and like I went to like the onsen, like the nude baths and did all this kind of weird like stuff that I normally wouldn't do and felt like a bit of a supermodel over there because all the Japanese are pretty short. Because so, there's obviously no blondes in Japan. Yeah, yeah, I felt like a god. Um, but I also just, I always love going to new countries and I guess it's a way like when you, you know, it's like when I was younger and I played soccer and I used to go overseas and travel for that. It was, you know, it was interesting because you'd be doing something over in another country as well but then you're still like kind of on a holiday. And then in Thessaloniki, that was a really fun festival because it was, yeah, in Greece, like by the water and just, you know, you get to go. It's interesting always to see like what other countries, how they kind of take your film on board and stuff. So in different reactions and sometimes they don't get the jokes or, you know, because a couple of jokes in Three by Mice about, you know, cricket. And like no one laughed at that in Greece. But then like in Dungog, I was like, yeah. <laughs> Are you hoping to get your new feature made overseas? Yeah, well, it's it's mainly set in Paris, and then there's uh, about a quarter of it set in Sydney, and a couple of scenes set in like Tokyo and New York at the start. So it's a bit ambitious, but now back to your family. Having grown up in the entertainment industry, um, are there any drawbacks, or I mean, did your family ever not want you to enter the family business, so to say? Um, well, I think like when I was young, like Dad, I went to dancing school, and I was really, really bad. I, was, I can't, I still can't dance. I was like the most horrible dancer ever. And Dad was like, "You're going to be like great." Like he was always very like pro, kind of you know, theater and film and stuff like that. And then, um, and then when I discovered like playing softball and soccer and doing all that, Mum was quite happy because she was like an ex kind of you know sports person as well. And then I went to film school, and that's when I decided, you know, I, I'd see Miranda who was you know getting heaps of jobs, and you kind of go, "That's a really fun side of the life." And then you see Dad who you know has been around a long time but sometimes he could sit you know for a year and not get any work and that's why I thought if I went to film school and then I could be like doing my own stuff on the side if I'm you know if I do want to do acting and then I kind of just fell into it and I guess I didn't really want to do acting and then when I did it I was like oh, I do like this but I'm just gonna pretend I don't like and what about the few modeling stints you've done how did you find this I guess yeah compared to your acting and your writing and directing Oh, um, yeah, I've been doing some like photo shoots. It's interesting because the first time I went, I was more interested in what like the person with the camera was doing. And I was like, oh, I'd like to stand here and do this. And now I've kind of got, you know, used to it. But I did have to do a catwalk one time and that was horrible. Like I walked out, I saw the photos, I walked down the end and there's not even photos of me like posing. I just walked down and turned back. And like, because, you know, everyone always has said like, you know, I walk like a man anyway, because of all my sport. <laughs> And I remember doing like the practice sessions and all the models are there and the guy got me to walk out 10 times by myself. He's like, Gracie, and again, he's like, stop walking like a bloke. And I was like, how embarrassing. What are your thoughts on people who attribute your fame to the Otto family name? How do you respond to criticism regarding this? Yeah, well, I guess people think it's a, sometimes they think it's an advantage to come from, you know, what family, you know, I do or something. And I guess, you know, some things obviously, you, you know, you, not that you put your foot in the door, but you can. But I've never like, you know, when I was in over in LA, I didn't have any friends for like three weeks and I was like oh you should just call your sister and ask her because she knows everyone I was like yeah but I wouldn't do that or you know and and then I guess at the end of the day sometimes you have, you have to do the talent to back it up so then sometimes there's even more pressure on you because when you do something people are like oh well you know she's not that good but like then if you didn't come from that family they'd be like oh she is good but they kind of want to put you down and then I guess with like tabloids and stuff when you're known as like you know someone's girlfriend as opposed to what work you do that that kind of gets annoying but now that's why I'm just trying to establish like all the stuff I do and kind of get out there and do that yeah so it's both I guess a help and a hindrance yeah and like I guess I'm always like really proud of my family as well so it's you know it's not like I don't like talking about them or anything it's because I you know when dad gets a job on Miranda I'm like genuinely thrilled for them and stuff I think it's cool so well Gracie you really are one of a kind your drive and determination has gotten you so far in such a short period of time already and I think it's safe to say we can see some great things from you yet oh thanks for having me on the show anytime and thank you for tuning into EWTV today I'm Angelique Delaney see you next time <laughs>